Okay, everyone. So in the last episode, we created this tile map system where we can add in uh, different levels and build different levels. However, we don't have a ball to be able to bounce in our level. So what we want to do in this episode is create the ball and the line renderer to be able to show off um, basically dragging and shooting the ball around the map. Okay guys, so without further ado, let's actually create our ball. Now we're just going to be using the built-in 2D sprite circle for our ball and we're just going to rename this to ball. Now I'm just going to reset its position to 0, 0. Um, you can see it right there, lovely little ball. Well, it's not very little, so let's make this smaller. We can make this either 0.5, but I like to go a bit smaller and say about 0.3. I feel like 0.3 works pretty well for our ball. You can see it looks pretty good. Now you can you can colour your ball, give it away if you want. I'm just gonna leave it white as a default uh, golf ball. Now we need a few different elements for this. Also, the first thing I want to do is just change its ordering layer to one so it never goes behind the grass as well. We could also create a new sorting layer for this to make sure it's always on top called ball. Then we can go back to our ball and apply that sorting layer. Then it doesn't matter what order layer it's on, it could be negative 100 and it would still be on top of the default layer there so on this what we're going to add in is a rigid body 2d this is where we're going to be applying physics to our ball and allowing it to move now we want to turn off the gravity scale because this isn't going to be falling down it's going to have it's not going to actually have gravity applied we don't want to change the collision detection to continuous just so we don't miss a um it doesn't go through any walls accidentally basically also going to add in some constraints on the sed we just don't want it to rotate around the sed axis because that can cause some weird effects when it bounces off the walls instead of bouncing and going in like this direction it could just go straight and it becomes slightly weird so we're going to leave no rotation on the sed axis uh, and we're going to change the interplate mode to interplate this will just allow us to actually um well it'll make the camera more smooth when we get the camera to follow the ball around in bigger levels the next thing we want to do is add a circle collider to this and this should be good already for the radius of the ball but we also want a physics material um, which will apply some sort of physics to our to our ball so we have make it more bouncy so what we want to do in art we're going to create a new folder which we're going to call the physics material or materials probably although we're only going to have one um but you never know later on the line you might want to make some other physics materials anyway we're going to select in here and we're going to go down to two actually we're going to go to 2d and physics material 2d and we'll call this the ball now in here we don't want any friction however we do want 0 0.7 of bounciness all of this will just help the ball bounce nicely and glide around a lot nicer now, if we go back to our ball, we can drag this physics material onto our circle collider. You could also pull it on your rigid body. However, the collider overwrites the material in the um, in the rigid body. I also just want to say we are going to change the um, linear jack drag to be somewhere around 0.6 or 0.5. Um, on here you want to play with this to make the ball feel better for you this is just how quick it will slow down um, after you fire it so if you want more roughness so it actually slows down quicker then you can apply extra drag finally we're going to add in the script or sorry the line render which is going to produce the line when we click and drag on our ball so what i do is here go down here and just add in a line renderer let's just minimize all of these and on the line render i'm going to set the width of the line to be something like 0 point or not 9 that would be very thick 0 0.2 and i'm just going to double click somewhere along here drag it and bring it all the way down to the bottom here just to give us a nice little pointed end and i'm going to set the end cap vertices to be something like 10 just so it's rounded at the edges and then we're going to also go to positions and just set this to zero by default you then want to go down to materials and just apply oh not Add a new one you just want to set this as the default line material you can add in a custom one if you want to i just feel like the default line is fine and finally i'm going to go to color select the top one and bring the alpha all the way to zero so it fades away as you uh, get further down the line and that is it for our line renderer now the final component we need is a custom component so let's create a new folder called uh code and inside the code we're going to have scripts and inside the scripts, we can create a new C sharp called ball, which we can double click to open up in Visual Studio Code. 
Now, the first thing we're going to want to do, I'm just going to zoom out here, or zoom in here, sorry, just so you guys can read it easier. First thing we want to do is I'm just going to create a header. I like to organize my... Uh, my attributes, um, or sorry, my um, my references and my attributes into separate um, headers. So we're gonna have a header for references and a header for attributes. This just keeps it nice thing. References are references to components and other objects and attributes are like the speeds, the power, all of that stuff for an object. Now in here, I'm gonna serialize a private um, and we're gonna have a rigid body 2D reference. We're also going to serialize another private line renderer, which we're going to call SR, or sorry, LR uh, for line renderer. And then we're going to have a final one. Actually, no, for this one, we're going to leave that as default. We'll add that in later. Then I want to create another serialized reference or serialized field uh, called a private float called the max power. Um, which we're going to set to 10f by default. I'm then going to serialize another private float called the default or just the power, which will be 2f. So this will be the multiplier for the power which is applied, and this will be the max power you can get to. We also, if this is for later references, but we want a private float which is going to be called max goal speed. And we're going to set this to 4f because if you're firing at full power and you go over the hole at let's say 10 speed, this it, in, in real golf it wouldn't go in. You want to be slower than a certain point. So we're going to make sure our ball is only rolling at a slow 4. 4f, four, 4 units per second, or what, I don't know how we classify this, but 4. Um, when it's rolling up four or less when it's rolling over the hole to actually score the goal now We need some private variables as well So I'm gonna have a ball called is dragging this will let us know if we are currently dragging the ball We then want a boolean called in hole which will be used later on Okay, so now we have set up our um Basically set up all the variables we need. We're going to now use the update method to call a method called uh, player input to check for when the player is obviously touching this or sorry, clicking and dragging and uh, basically moving the um, moving the player. So what we want to do is create this uh, private void called player input. And inside of here, we want to just say vector2. And we want this to be the input position. So we're going to have um, the, well, whatever the input is. And then we can say camera.main.screen to world point. And then we can say input.mouse position. So this is just going to convert the mouse position from the screen to the world. We then want to create a float called distance, um, which is set to vector two dot distance and we'll get the distance between the current position of the ball and the mouse position now what we want to do is say if our input dot get mouse button down zero so it's going to get the right or the left mouse buttons so when you click the left mouse button we want to check if the distance between the ball and where you clicked the mouse is less than or equal to 0.5f because we want it to be as close to the ball as possible so your input is next to it we then want to call drag start which we need to create the method for so we'll create a private void called drag start we also want to create two more private voids called drag uh, change and oh and we also want one more called private void drag release so if we now copy this, we can actually change this to have each one. We just want to move the distance away from the second one. Um, and we want to check if it's, oh, it's dragging as well. And in start, we want to say is dragging is equal to true. And we want to change this from down to just get mouse button. This will get the mouse e every single frame it is held down and not just when you first hold it down. We then want to get mouse button up and it's dragging and then we want to call drag release. Also, we want to change the second one to be drag change. 
So right now, drag start and drag change are only actually needed for um, the line renderer. The only thing we actually need is drag release. So we want to know when we start, we need to set is drag into true, but then all we need to do in drag release to actually do all the uh, functionality. So what we're going to do is we have float called distance again, which is going to be equal to a vector to um, dot distance. And we'll get the distance from, and then we need to convert this to effector two. We need to get the current transform dot position and cast it as effector two. And then we're going to get the position. Now we're actually going to pass this position in through our drag release method, which is going to be our input position. This also needs to be a vector two. Then need to get is dragging and set that equal to false because that means we are no longer dragging the ball. And then we want to say if the distance is less than 1f so the distance is sorry it's great I'll check if the distance is less than 1f then we're going to return because that means if the distance we have clicked and dragged from is less than 1f then that means we're cancelling the uh, drag because we haven't dragged far enough to actually do any movement we then want to get a vector 2 called direction which is going to be equal to another cast of vector 2 from the current transform dot position and then we're going to minus the position of the mouse we pass in and that is going to give us the direction we need to say vector 2 dot clamp magnitude uh, magnitude will clamp basically the maximum length of the vector and we're going to say direction times power so we're going to apply our power to the direction we've pulled and then we're going to pass in max power as the clamp so we're going to clamp it to the maximum um, power and that should be it to get our ball moving so let's go back to unity let's set our ball script on our ball here and what we're going to do is reference our rigid body and our line renderer and we can leave the rest as default so now if we hit play in our game we should be able to click drag and release and see the ball bounce around however you're going to see i can click and drag this ball from anywhere even though it's still moving and it's still able to um, go and obviously we don't want the ability to be able to drag at any point we only want to drag it once the ball has slowed down enough to be dragged so what we want to do is go back to our VS code and we want to create a new function called is ready. So up here we want to create a private void is ready or sorry a private a private boolean called is ready which we are just going to say return and we are just going to check whether the rigid body dot dot magnitude is less than 0.2 f now you can try and change this and change this number to what matches you um this is just going to tell us once the ball is slow enough we can then actually click and drag again so inside of our player input we just want to say if it's not ready so if it's not ready we're just going to return and that means we will not do any input in our game so now we're testing this again let's drag and look if i try and drag again you can see it will not go in the opposite direction until it slows down enough that we can grab it again there you go you see it slowed down just enough there that i can grab it again but you can see it won't go until it gets slow enough for us to grab which is perfect now you may notice there's no line render on screen so we need to actually add in the ability to use our line renderer and that's where the drag start and drag change functions actually come in so in drag start we just want to say lr dot position count is equal to two because we're only going to have two points the drag and the direction we're aiming for we then want to set our vector two and we want to also pass in sorry a vector two to this called our position like we did before here so we can pass input position to our drag change so we want to get the direction first of where we're firing so we just need to do vector two um transform dot position minus position and I don't know why I put this in brackets. This does not need to be in brackets. We can enter an LR.setPosition and we want to get position zero. So the first position, which is going to be equal to the position of our ball. We then want to get position. Um, we want to set position uh, one, which will be the second position. And we need to get cast enough effector two for our transform dot position so we want to get our current position and then add on basically the same thing we did down here to fire the ball we want to get this magnitude 
Um, and instead of this, we actually want to divide each of these by two. So we're going to wrap this in a bracket uh, and divide that by two. We then want to divide our max power by two. This just makes it so the line isn't as long as the actual shot, giving some illusion that it's not perfect. Um, so you don't have pinpoint accuracy of where this position will be. You're going to divide it by half, so it only shows you half the direction it should. Now, you can take the uh, half away, and it will still work fine, but I like to add in the half, uh, dividing by two here to basically make it a bit more fun and less uh, easy, if that makes sense. Finally, inside of our drag release, all we want to do is say set position count equal to zero so it will hide the actual line itself. So we can save this, go back to our game, and we should just be able to hit play because we've already, ref already referenced our line renderer. Just make sure you have your line renderer in here. Hit play, and then let's see how this goes. So here we go. You can see we now have our line renderer. If I go shorter, you can see it gives you a little shorter firing rate. And there you go. We can then, when it gets allows us to go fast, we can then fire this and bounce this off the walls, which is super awesome. So there you go. You can see the difference here. We can then wait for it to come to a stop and hit this and fire it off the walls again. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. In the next one, we are going to be adding in the hole or the goal so we can actually score some goals. We'll probably also get some game UI in after that video as well um, to show you how many strokes you have on this game. We'll be adding lose and win states and obviously menus and level select so if there's anything you want to see other than those things let me know in the comments down below and i will add it into this series but that's going to be it for this video don't forget to leave a like smash that subscribe button if you're new around here and leave a comment down below now if you also uh, want to get involved in the community feel free to jump on our discord server the link is in the description it's on my channel you can find the link pretty much anywhere hop in say hello and get involved with the game dev uh, community as well but that's going to be it for this one i'll see you in in the next one. Peace out.